Good morning everybody. Happy Tuesday. Welcome back. In today's video, I'm going to be doing another video about nipple shields. I have this other video on nipple shields if you want to check it out. But in this video, I had a comment from a viewer and I'm going to go ahead and read that comment to you. She said, I wish you weren't this discouraging and talked about the many positives too. I could not breastfeed if it weren't for the shield. I was exclusively pumping and it was absolutely awful. Sometimes things are out of your control. My nurse told me I might have to use the shield the whole time on my breastfeeding journey and that's okay because my baby is getting fed. It's not ideal but for those who need it the shield is great. I definitely agree with this reader. I did not mean to focus only on the negative. I wanted to bring to your attention the pros and cons of using a nipple shield but today we're going to focus on the pros and on the situations that really could be beneficial for using a nipple shield. So stay tuned to the end of the video because we're going to cover a bunch of scenarios on when a nipple shield could be helpful and I'm also going to review with you all how to properly put on a nipple shield. My name is Cassie Reyes. I am a registered nurse and a board certified lactation consultant. I am also co-founder of People's Lactation and I'm so happy to have you here. I really love the community that's growing here and I have to tell you guys I absolutely love the stories that you all share down below about your breastfeeding journey so keep it coming. Alright so some of the situations that a nipple shield could be really helpful for and for those of you who don't know what a nipple shield is this is a nipple shield it's a little silicone shield that gets placed over the nipple and extends it a little bit. A nipple shield, if you have a preterm baby, can be really useful if baby's having a hard time maintaining a latch. So if you are working with a lactation consultant, you might be recommended to try a nipple shield depending on how your baby is doing with feedings at the breast or chest. The shield can be a good tool to help baby maintain a latch if they're having a lot of trouble creating strong suction and are slipping on and off of the breast or chest for feedings. Another situation where a nipple shield can be really helpful is if the parent has inverted or flat nipples. And we did discuss other techniques for dealing with inverted or flat nipples in this video. Um, but with a nipple shield, it does help extend a shorter nipple a little bit and tickle the roof of baby's mouth where their suck reflex is. So sometimes in the beginning when baby is still growing, they can't quite accommodate enough tissue in the mouth to feel the nipple on the roof of the mouth and initiate sucking if that nipple is a little bit shorter or flat or inverted. However, as baby grows, they tend to be able to accommodate more chest tissue in the mouth and may grow out of needing the nipple shield. So it may be a tool that you use to get your breastfeeding journey started and you might not need it for the long term. The third situation where a nipple shield can sometimes be helpful, but not always, is if your baby has a tongue tie. Tongue tie can cause some painful latching and tends to have baby feel like they're chomping on the nipple and may leave the nipple compressed and really sore. While parents are waiting for this to be assessed by another professional, such as a pediatric dentist or an ENT, they may find that using a nipple shield just helps give them a little bit of a barrier between baby's chompy suck and may relieve some of that pain. I say that this sometimes works because sometimes if it's not an ideal latch, no matter if you're using the nipple shield or not, it may still feel uncomfortable and may just feel like baby's kind of chomping over the silicone shield. Since the latch is still not ideal, the parent may still experience pain, but it is a good tool and a good option to try for those parents who are experiencing extreme discomfort that is suspected to be caused by a tongue or even a lip tie. Also, something else that goes hand in hand with a tongue tie is a baby with a high palate. So fun fact, um, when a baby has a tongue tie, they may also have a higher palate because the tongue was unable to push up on the palate and help it form. So a baby with a higher palate 
So say this is the normal palette, the nipple would easily touch up there, but if the palette's higher, despite a deep latch, the baby may not be getting that stimulation to the roof of the mouth to know to initiate a suck. Guys, if this is your first time here, I wanted to mention that I do have a link down below for a free lactation guide for the first one to five days with your newborn. So go ahead and click that link and I'll be happy to share that with you. I also wanted to mention that I have started a Facebook group and this group is to be kind of a support community for all of you to support one another. The Facebook group is called Lactation for the People and I will also put a link for that group down below. Another situation where a nipple shield may be helpful is if a parent has a really fast letdown or an oversupply of milk. And in this case, I would definitely hope that you're working with a lactation consultant, but it may be recommended that you try a nipple shield because the shield does have these little holes in the end and the milk can still come out through those holes, but it does help slow down the flow a little bit. So if you have a baby who, when you feel your milk let down, is pulling back off and kind of sputtering or leaking milk or coughing a little bit when you're having a letdown, then could be due to a fast letdown or possibly an oversupply. So this tool could be helpful in that situation. I would also recommend working with someone to help you address the other concerns that may come along with an oversupply of milk. And finally, the last situation we're gonna talk about where a nipple shield could be very helpful is bringing a baby back to the breast or chest after they've been bottle feeding. So while a nipple shield can be helpful anytime that you are having a hard time getting your baby to latch and stay latched, it's not always the first go-to, um, but often it can be a really useful tool if you are getting your baby back to the breast or chest after bottle feeding. Um, sometimes bottle fed babies get used to a faster flow from the uh, from the bottle, but also they may just have gotten used to feeling a little bit extra stimulation from the bottle nipple on the roof of their mouth. So when we're trying to relactate or reintroduce the breast or chest to a bottle fed baby, often a nipple shield, which can feel more similar to the bottle nipple can be a useful tool for encouraging baby to come back to feed at the breast or chest. And I'm gonna give you a little pro tip here. If you are using a nipple shield to encourage your baby back to the chest, what you can do is backfill this conical part of the shield with a little bit of expressed milk. And if you don't have expressed milk on hand, that's okay. You can always use a syringe or a dropper to put a couple of drops of formula into the shield so that when baby starts initiating sucking, they are encouraged to continue. My next video is going to be about hand expression. So if you're unsure of how to hand express some milk into the shield, then watch my next video because we will go over a very simple technique for hand expression. So remember, I do have this other video on nipple shield use, but really quickly, since you're here, I wanted to review how to properly place a nipple shield. We're gonna take our fake boob here, and I'm gonna show you real quick. With the nipple shield, you do wanna go ahead and put your thumbs on each side of this conical shape, flip it halfway inside out, so you leave a little dip in the end, and you place that little dip over the nipple, and then you stretch the space over the nipple and areola. And you're gonna feel that pop right up and it's gonna stay on with suction and pull the nipple up into the shield. If you're having trouble getting it to stay on, another pro tip here is that you can line the edge of this with a little bit of lanolin or coconut oil, um, olive oil is even a little bit more sticky to get it to stick to the skin. Remember that nipple shield does have some downsides to using it. So before you jump right into using a nipple shield, I 
would highly recommend checking in with a lactation consultant so that you have a plan for using the shield and hopefully weaning off of the shield eventually. So I wanna thank the viewer who reached out and recommended that I go over some of the more positive sides to using a nipple shield. This is in no way an exhaustive list of all the situations where you may need to use a nipple shield. Um, if you guys can think of any others or if you had to use a nipple shield for a reason other than a reason that I mentioned, I would love to hear the comments down below. Please share with the community so we can all learn from each other. And I hope that you all have a great day. If you're new here, I would love to have you subscribe to the community click down below to subscribe and give us a like. If you hit the bell, you're gonna be notified each week when I post a new video. I post new videos every Tuesday and I would love to have you join the community. So welcome and please feel free to share videos with any other families that you think could benefit from this information. I hope you guys have a great week and I will see you next Tuesday. Bye.